Sometimes if you're using any of these any of these magic words here, you can think of free, low, reduced, fewer, high. You can like sodium free or reduced sodium, those kind of things. If you have that, it requires a nutritional facts panel, even on the CFOs. So only if you're using these things. If you're making a health claim about your product, where are we seeing this mostly mostly? Gluten free. <laughs> so the state is sticking to their guns that if you use the words gluten free, you need to have a nutritional facts panel. Why? This says nothing about gluten on this label. It's the traditional things about fat, cholesterol, sodium. But again, it's just, that's the way the state really has their blinders on sometimes about these things, that if you're using that word, you're making a health claim. So I haven't seen anyone you know, try to sell me that they're making a low sugar uh, product or a reduced fat product. That hasn't been an issue. The word free has only come up with gluten free. And again, like no wheat. yeah, made without wheat, those kind of things. So again, I'm fine with that. These are the trigger words here, right? And that's just from national, federal state uh, labeling standards. So, you know, we'll, we'll cover that. If someone says we're going to put gluten free, you'll say, well, you need a nutritional facts panel or you need to change your labeling a little bit. And hopefully that will change too, because it doesn't seem necessary. Where do you go to get that nutritional facts Where do you go to get it? Yeah, so. Yeah, I, I know that there's some, do you know, I don't know, Tom knows a little bit about this? Bigoven.com, bigoven.com, I've heard that you can uh, read nutritional facts there, and I think if you just, I guess we can't use the word Google anymore, right. just do a search for nutritional um, uh, programs, there's a lot of stuff online, but I know Big Oven does. Yeah, I've heard the same thing that you can do it. You type it in your ingredients, the weights, the, the, and then they'll kick you out these numbers as well. So. Portion size. They don't te test it then. Yeah. I don't think you necessarily have to send it in to be tested, no. <laughs> right? It's like a dry lab thing, is my understanding. It's, it's uh, strictly by the ingredients, by the recipe that you do. Yeah. Figuring out. yeah. I think it's like a, 150 bucks, or I did it like over 10 something years ago. So. So again, just FYI, that's out there. Um, the other, the simple parts of the application too is just a drawing, a floor. A, 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 we want a diagram of your kitchen, basically. Just it's it's so we know if you thought about where you're going to be making your food. It is specific that the food needs to be made inside the kitchen. So we're not expecting you to make an outdoor building or you know doing production in your living room or in the garage. In fact, we're, you're not supposed to be doing that. We want to know that you're using your home kitchen and we want to know where you're storing your stuff, where you're storing your ingredients, where you're storing your finished products. You know, again, we don't want to see things stacked up in some bathroom somewhere or some dark part of your garage or something. So again, we just want to make sure that things are clean. That's all there is to it, right? So you have a cabinet that's dedicated for it. We like to see separation like this is my cottage food shelf, excellent. Uh, you know, these are the utensils I use. I keep them separated from my other utensils. Really good stuff. So that's, it's kind of your way of, of it's our way of seeing that you've thought about this, is showing, okay, where are you gonna store these things? You know, where's, uh, where are you gonna finish your, where are you gonna put your finished product at? Really easy. Uh, the inspection, again, class A, we only do response to complaint. Class B is on an annual basis and in response to complaint. And we're only inspecting the portions of your home that are used for the CFO. So we're not going through your whole place. You know, we're not going to their white cloth and we're not here to judge you or anything. We just want to look at how's the food being made? Is this going to work in your kitchen? So that's all there is to it. Don't be scared about it is what I'm saying. Uh, yeah. So I was under the impression they only came out and inspected one time and if there was a complaint or something they would come back again. Annual, you have class B, right? I think you have over there. Yeah, so when you get your renewal, the inspectors can come back out again next year, too. Yeah. Come out yearly. Yes. Bill, is that a scheduled inspection? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it, it maybe a response to complaint. If we thought there was something dubious going on, we might do something to try to, we would contact you first anyway. So we'd say, hey, we got this complaint. What's going on? Give you a chance you know, to respond to that. If we get repetitive complaints, multiple complaints, then we might try to sneak up on you or something, but in general, no, we're, we're calling you, we're letting you know we're coming, you know, we want to see what your house looks like. Good. Um, again, pretty straightforward as far as that goes, in my opinion. It hasn't been an issue. At the houses I've gone to, it's all gone very smoothly. Again, because usually by the time you're scheduling an appointment, you've already filtered out all the issues on, in a phone conversation and through the application. And again, most of the issues have been with, this food's not going to match the list, you know? I, I'm sorry, you know? And sometimes I just got to say no. It, it's just not going to match. There's nothing I can do about it. Go back to the traditional routes of production. Sometimes you got to say no. 
Uh, there's also these sales limits built into the law too. This hasn't been an issue yet, but they're just built into an escalating uh, uh, amount of gross uh, income you can get from uh, these uh, sales. Uh, right now we're at $45,000 annual sales. Uh, next year, 50,000, and at that point that's all we have. We're not collecting receipts. We're not asking for tax information about how much money you made. Uh, it's just set in there so if a business gets too big for its house, well, there's some kind of number we can point back to. Well, you've exceeded that number. That's why you can't work in your house anymore. So it's kind of a back end thing more than a front end thing. We're not looking to see, oh, oh wait, wait, you're at 43,000. Uh, you know, uh -huh. it's again, it, it'd be more like, hey, that my neighbor's place is out of control. They're baking in there 24 hours a day. And then we can say, well, hey, how much money did they make last year? Well, they've exceeded that limit that's that's our, our cause we have a justification for saying you have to move out of that that home business I, I have a question sure about, um, this schedule of 2013 until the 15th sure so is this like a starting point you start in 2013 you cannot make more than 35 and you increase per year and then that's pretty simple now the thing is you start in 2013 and in 2017 you're still at 20,000 I mean are you can you still do or do you sure, I mean, there's no. This is only precluding you from getting too big for your place. Is all it is. It doesn't mean if you don't make that, you have to stop. Okay. No, no. There's no lower limit, right? Okay. So uh, keep doing it. Well, it should be fun. I hope if yeah. you're if you're doing it, you know, and if at that point. So again, it's just built in to say that okay, you can't get too big in your own house. Is what it is for. Um, and then uh, also retail food permit categories. I said I would get to this. So okay, let's say you get your cottage food taken care of. Well, now how are you gonna sell your cottage food? You still might have to get an additional permit from the health department. Say if you wanna sell at the farmer's market. Most common question. I, I made a product, I wanna sell at the farmer's market. All these food booths at the farmer's market have an individual retail food permit with the county. It's a temporary food booth permit, it's an annual permit. So if you have your cottage food product, you want to sell at the farmer's market, we're going to still issue you a permit, more fees, to operate at the farmer's market, just like anyone else. So it doesn't give you, hey, I got my cottage food in, I'm going to set up at the farmer's market. No, 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 this is a separate retailing uh, opportunity. Same thing if you want to start a mobile truck, you want to have some kind of push cart or truck or something, we're still going to permit that the way we would anyone else. But we're going to allow you to sell your cottage food off of it as part of it. It's this idea of an approved source, so by making your cottage food operation, your registration, you're calling your food, or we're calling it as being from an approved source. But we're still going to look at these retail outlets uh, and permit them like we would anyone else. Yeah? So do you need a separate permit for each farmer's market? No, it's a year-round temporary food booth permit, so basically one covers any per any. It's for art and wine festivals, weekend events, farmers markets, anything we call any of these tent setups we call temporary food booths. And so you get an annual permit, the fee is roughly I wish I had down 282, 300, something like that, uh, and that's going to cover you for all events for for the year. Do you have a separate fee for the city, like the Capitola versus the city? No. So again, we are issuing county permits. Are good countywide. When you go to these events, of course, event coordinators are going to have their own deals about how much you have to pay them to set, to operate there. So that's you know case by case. They're going to either want to cut or they're going to want some money for you know setting up. But uh, that's that's it. Uh, food vending, food services are just kind of traditional permits where like stores or restaurants. Mobile food is everything from trucks to push carts, bicycle push carts, those kind of things. Mobile, uh, sorry, temporary food booths are these. And catering is kind of a catch-all category. A lot of people want to start as a, a caterer. So that's usually the next step is I want to make more savory foods, more things with meat, those kind of things. Well, you probably step into a catering category, get a catering kitchen, and then, you know, people are you, they're calling you and you're fulfilling orders for them. Um, yeah, any questions about this? I just kind of threw it in there. Yeah, okay, couple. Go ahead over here. So, um, since I have a farm, I need a produce certificate. So, if I wanted to sell at the farmer's market, is that something I wouldn't apply through your office? Is well? Okay, so when I said the farmer's market, there's actually two things happening out there. There's a, we call it a certified farmer's market. That means that all the ag vendor or ag growers are certified with the county ag commissioner. So, those all 
again, you have to go to the Ag Commissioner if you want to sell produce out there. That's all the farmers. Then there's this special event that works in conjunction with the farmer's market. That's where all these temporary food booths are. So we individually permit each one of these food booths. The farmer's market at large is a market organizer who carries a permit. All the farms are certified from the Ag Commissioner. Okay. So, so that's how that works. Sell produce and then something bottled that I made in my house, I'd need to get both. Yeah, exactly. You can't do it in the same spot. So you'll notice that, um, well, they do it sometimes. They'll do juices. If it's made, if it's an ag product made by the ag producer, that's why you'll see things like sometimes you'll see juices and dried fruit maybe at the certified section, at the ag section of the market. But where you see all the bread and coffee and stuff is on the other side because there has to be a distinction between these. It's, it's again, state law, right? It's just the way things are. And as a customer, you might not even recognize them. I think, well, why do they? Well, they are separate. They are. And if you look at it, all the markets are like that. All the farmers are together and all the non-ag are on the other side. So, yeah, it's just the way it is. So, uh, I, don't know, I could talk a long time about that, I too. Yeah, potentially. And now, again, if you're making ag products, then potentially you could sell it. Uh, again, it's a little more complicated with that. You know, ag producers are allowed to sell from the property too. You know, so that's on the state level. Actually, right there. Yeah, we could talk about. It. You could call me too, and we could talk about the specifics. Again, each case is a little bit different. So, again, you know, not knowing exactly what you want to do and where you are and where you're standing with the ag commissioner too. So, but they would be involved if it's a farm. Ag county ag covers that too. Okay, over here first. So now you have these permits, and we'll, I'll choose mobile food. So if you have a mobile food truck, mm -hmm. now does that mean the list of foods that you can sell has changed? Sure. Uh, you know, mobile foods can sell a lot of things. Everything has to come from an approved source. You can go to Costco and get you know, a bunch of stink Snickers and sell them off of the truck. You can make, if it's the right truck, you can make burritos off of it, right? right. So there's a lot of more options. What happens with, as in reference to cottage food, again, cottage food is just another avenue for an approved source. So I'm saying you could sell it off a truck. I, I'm not exactly sure where you're talking about. You can sell anything off a, off a truck, basically. Well, the list of foods that are allowed, cream is one food that's a no-no. But if you do a right. food service, sure. you have a... So I guess this slide is really separate from the cottage. I don't know, I was saying what the next step is basically with this. So it's really separate. This is what categories we have in general. And of course, there's all types of food. How this fits in with cottage food is, sure, you could sell it off of a truck. We'd still need to permit this truck, right? That's all I'm getting at there, you know? And, from, and what I would like to know is when, if you want to sell to the market, the farmer's market, huh? you need to get into the farmer's market and pay the booth, whatever that is, and then you need to pay the license for selling one of these licenses, like temporary food, mm -hmm. because you are selling in a farmer's market, right? That's exactly right. And it's a yearly fee? That's correct. Okay. Both? Like uh, this one yearly fee and the farmer's market yearly fee, or how, you do, do you do that? What we issue is a year-round temporary food booth permit, and also your cottage food license operation, right? Well, the cottage food, I understand that. Right. But then, then you need to have like a special License, okay, well, that's it's three, three, three fees, right? Involved if you want to Two. sell at the uh, farmer's market, uh, like the farmer's market booth. Or, or it says Two fees from our department, yes. I don't know how many other fees you're going to have to pay in general. I mean, okay. we're talking, yeah, of course, the, the market organizer is going to have some part, to, part in there. So I can't comment on things that are beyond the health department here. Okay. I'm just saying from our department, yes, we're going to look at, is the food coming from an approved source? Yes, if you have a cottage food. Yeah. Can you sell it at the market? Yes, if you have a temporary food booth permit. Okay. Okay. What's the approximate cost of that? Uh, God, I want to say right around two, 280, I think sounds right, 300, somewhere in there. And again, the fee categories are available online too. Uh, if you called me too, I can get you the right ones too. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, any other? Okay, back here. Yeah. I have a question about the food trucks. I'm yes. Where to go to find the all, all the specifications I need for the truck and all the <clears throat> sure. Uh, there, he was asking about specifications for the food truck. Um, uh, there, are, there is some information on our website out there. If you contact me too, I can get you some stuff together for that. Um, yeah, and we can talk about the particulars of that. On whether you were cooking in a commercial kitchen and selling it out of the truck. Or yeah. The truck. Yeah, there's a lot. We can talk about that. Yeah, exactly. But you need a commissary. You need a home base for that vehicle. Okay. So, yeah. Great. Uh, I'm going to move on. I think I'm about done. That's it. Just the contact information. So if, any questions uh, that I didn't cover or anything else? We've got a couple more minutes, I think, uh, to answer some questions. Four minutes. Four minutes. Right on time. Doing great. Okay.
So just to make sure that I've got it really clear. Sure. If this lady who's selling mustard uh -huh. wants to sell it off of her food truck, okay. she has to have two permits from you. Yes. And then, so if she's selling hot dogs off the food truck and then selling her mustards as an adjunct to the hot dogs, right. permits from you is all. But if she's doing the same thing at the farmer's market, she would have to pay the fee to the farmer's market whatever their fees. Sure. Uh, in addition, yeah. Anytime you go into any of these things, you go to a art and wine festival, farmers market, anything with an event organizer, you know, uh, they're going to charge you some money for that. Just like say if you're even if you have a truck, right? If you want to go sell at county parks. Okay. Well, county parks is going to want to take some participation in that as well. So, again, all I can comment is what you need from our department and we're assuring that your food's coming from an approved source and you have an approved conveyance for that food. Cooking yes. On the food, cooking the hot dog on the food truck requires you to have some other certificate, some other kind of. If the truck's capable of doing that, again, the truck categories go everything from an ice cream truck with nothing to a full prep where they're making anything you want, right? Rotisserie chicken, you know? A license for that, or you have to show that you can do this. Yes, we'll review that, just like we review any other restaurant. And so. The, and the county reason? Yes. Yeah, so again, there's a whole category for mobile food facilities, and we will review them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Tom? Well, is there, um, that also requires a plan check, does it not? It does, yeah. So again, if you're bringing in a truck, show it to us on paper first, show us the menu, make sure it's going to work out. Uh, if you, even if you find an old truck online, again, some of those old ones don't meet current code. So, you know, again, that's a whole, I guess, a whole different topic. We could talk about mobile food. Uh, and I don't know if you'll put that in the series sometimes too. But I'm not necessarily the expert on that either, but I can find you one. Yeah. Um, I heard something at a presentation at Watsonville recently about also this cottage bill. Mm -hmm. um, it was the. Uh, how at first you could only sell lo uh, county wise, and now it's like California, but you cannot mail it anywhere. No, yeah, that's part so of the law. Some, yeah, that's still in there. Yeah, it is a very important part. Yeah, so you can create a website for your cottage food. You can advertise yourself, but you can't mail the food. Uh, that's just part of the state guidelines. If you mail food, you're in the wholesale category. They're saying you need a wholesale permit to do that. And they won't issue a wholesale permit for food made in the home. So uh, you can still advertise yourself and arrange things like, oh, okay, I can come and meet you somewhere or you can come and pick it up. You can advertise yourself, but you can't mail things in the mail. And the second part about that was uh, the, what else were you talking about? The, the limitation of how, not outside of California. Right, right. So again, the counties, the issues, excuse me, the permit that we issue is for Santa Cruz County. Whether or not that's valid in Santa Clara County is up to Santa Clara County. We've been accepting uh, permits from Monterey and from Santa Clara from out of county, but it's a county by county basis. So let's say if you have a cottage food uh, registration from Santa Cruz County, you want to go over to Santa Clara and sell. You, that I think they've been allowing it. I haven't heard anyone I say they're not. In San Francisco, when they uh, basically uh, had me go through a checklist and then Good. had me pay. Okay. Then, and that can happen county to county, you know, again. So clear with Santa Cruz, you might have to pay again in San Francisco. And that's, you hear the mobile guys complain about this all the time, or the people who do fair circuits. Mm -hmm. Think about the guys that do like county fairs. They're in a different county each week, and they're paying permits to the county health department each week. Mm -hmm. They really get mad about it. Yeah. So I can't ship it, but can I drive it myself? Yes, you can drive it yourself. That's, that's what we're getting at there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, what kind of permit would I need if I wanted to do uh, things like pickles and hot sauce since they're not covered under this? Okay, so it depends on how you're going to sell it. Presumably you're going to jar it and put it in a cell, in, in a store. So again, you would go through the state, the state processed food registration. Yeah, um, they're the ones who would handle anything that's jarred. When we hear that you hear jarred or canned, we usually say, oh, like, you need to go to the state with that. <laughs> Just because, again, it's more complicated. They're going to want to know how you're acidifying the food, what your procedures are, what the ingredients are. Do you at home at all? Do you know? Not pickles aren't on the list, I don't know. Pickles aren't on there. Sauerkraut's not on there. Um, what about fresh pesto? Not on there, yeah, no. Basically anything produce. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, unfortunately not. So again, sometimes it's just, the starting point is just no with certain products. And I've, I've tried to dance around it a little bit. So, well, I'm just kind of wasting everyone's time here. If it's not on the list, I can't approve it. 
you know. So you got to convince me it's on your products on the list. You know, if it's questionable. And then one more time. Freeze it like the pesto. Use a pesto. Not under cottage food. No, I mean you can go back to traditional routes. You know, you can go back to the traditional permitting routes, but uh, commercial kitchen. So it's imperishable. Yeah, unfortunately, just yeah, no, it's, it doesn't fit the category. There you go. There's creativity. There's a creativity. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think that's about my time limit here. I don't know. I'll be around if you have more questions and you have my contact information if you want to call. All right. <laughs> well, thank you, Phil. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. No problem. Uh, how many of you have seen the movie Chef lighting at the Belmar Fair? Uh, you have to room. We really do. And so, my husband hates going to movies. I drag him and a resounding resounding I think so. Not only is he not better, he actually calls the And you know, it's kind of a corny movie, but it's also wonderful and really funny, and it's about food. Yeah. And what this, how passionate this man is about bringing his dream into a reality. It's not realistic. I'm sitting there with a small business advisor. He didn't, he didn't project his food cost. There's no way that food would have passed inspection. And, you know, so as soon as I stopped doing that, I enjoyed the movie. So. <laughs> But I think it would be informative. Yeah, yeah, Chef. It's with yeah. Dustin Hoffman, and yeah. there's yeah. lots of cameos by um, actors we all it's know fantastic. and love. It's really good. Yeah. You've seen it? Yeah. yeah. That was great. Um, so we're going to take about a 10, 15 minute break. We have some cookies um, um, out there for you, and there is a drinking fountain, and we will all call everybody back in so we stay on time. And Phil, you can stick around a little bit. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Great. So if you have more questions individually. And I heard a lot of food truck questions, so put that on your evaluation if you want. Follow up the workshops on food trucks and we'll develop them for you. Okay, so great time.